when God's Lord made persecution we must bear. Trials and crosses in our way. All the attacks of our souls are sweet and the victory. Amen. 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 I want to now um, just turn over to Alita for the opening hymn, hymn number 600, right, Alita? Good night, everyone. Our opening hymn will be number 600, Hold Fast Till I Come. Sweet promises is given to all who believe. Behold, I come quickly, my Lord, to receive. Oh, fast will I come, the danger is great. Sleep not as do others, be watchful and wait. Oh, Let us bow our heads as I pray. Almighty Father, we give thee thanks for another opportunity where we can gather together and fellowship and worship your sweet and holy name. Almighty Father, we are nothing, but because of you, O Lord, we are made worthy. And so tonight, O oh Lord, as we come to listen to your word, we ask that you will soften our hearts so that it may be receptive to your biddings, to your instructions. We ask that, O oh Lord, we will process your message of hope in our mind and accept everything that is said to us tonight. Almighty Father, 
grant us your blessing, grant us your peace. But most of all, oh Father, your woman servant will be speaking to us tonight. Remove ner nervousness from her. Touch her brain cell. Almighty Father, the words that she will come bring in tonight, Lord, may it find lodgment on her heart and may it convict her first, oh Lord. And at the end of tonight's program, we pray, oh Lord, that we will be changed. We will be energized. We will be renewed, revived to go forth spreading your word and to conquer in your name. So Lord, we ask that you will remain in our midst tonight and your Holy Spirit will convict the hearts of unbelievers. May this message of hope be broadcast to those still in doubt, still in the valley of decision. And oh Lord, may it rest on their heart. Give them sleepless night until Lord, they would have made that decision to serve you as their king. Take charge of the remaining session, O oh Lord. And we pray and ask that there will be no technical difficulties, but at the end, Lord, you will get all honor and praise. Thank you for everything that you have done and for what you're going to do in your mighty and holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. Please turn your Bibles to Romans 12. To When you find it, please say amen. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, brethren. Good night, friends. Nice to see so much of us. I just want to tell you that it's lovely to see you and welcome. Um, so right now we're just going to have a little health tip. Health for you, health for me, health for all mankind. Tonight we will talk about what most people avoid talking about. It's natural. So... Why are we so to talk about our bottom business tonight? We will talk about something that everybody does. So let's talk about poop. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do it? What? What? So today we're talking about stools. Now, I kind of like the four-legged bar stool myself. I find it's very stable, it's uh, it's easy to sit on, and uh, what? Oh, we're not talking about that kind of stool? Oh. And now for a different kind of stool. 12 things your poop says about your health. Well, as gross as it may sound, the color and shape of your stool can reveal a lot about your health. Any changes you might notice can be a sign of a serious disease. Don't ignore them. Watch this video till the end to take another step toward good health. Poop color. As you probably know, the normal color of stool is brown. It may vary slightly from time to time depending on what you eat. 
but a sudden color change for no obvious reason can be a warning sign. So let's find out what's what. White Whitish, grayish, or clay-colored stool indicates a lack of bile. Bile is what makes normal poop brown. Lighter poop may hint at problems with the liver and gallbladder, as these are organs where bile is produced and stored. It can be anything from blocked bile ducts and gallstones to cirrhosis. Gallstones can give you some serious abdominal pain or show no signs of their existence, making it trickier to diagnose. As for cirrhosis, it gives your liver irreversible damage, so early detection of it could be life-saving. White mucus on brown stool may be a sign of Crohn's disease, which is a chronic inflammatory bowel disease. Number 2. Green Are you a fan of spinach, kale, and broccoli? Or maybe your diet contains avocados, cucumbers, zucchini, kiwis, and other green foods. Then you probably don't have a reason to worry about green poop. A green color may be caused by the consumption of vegetables rich in chlorophyll, which makes them green, or green food coloring in drinks and iron supplements. If food is not the reason, it means your stool passed the digestive tract too quickly and didn't have time to get enough bile and bilirubin. Are you guys still with me on this trek through the poop? Great! Number 3. Yellow Have you noticed that your stool looks yellowish? is covered in greasy film, and even leaves drops of oil in the toilet bowl? Yellow stool can be a sign of blocked bile ducts and poor fat absorption. When your digestive system fails to break down food the way it should, too much fat goes out with your stool. Another reason is a lack of enzymes produced by the pancreas, which may hint at chronic pancreatitis, cystic fibrosis, and celiac disease. People who have celiac disease can eat gluten, so bread and pasta, along with other foods rich in gluten, give their intestines a hard time. But don't panic! Yellow poop can also be a sign that you ate too many carrots and had a lot of yellow-colored drinks. Yes, they could make your poop look golden. Number 4. Black Number 4. Black stool may appear because of medicine intake, like aspirin, ibuprofen, and iron supplements, or bleeding in the intestines. The latter is obviously a reason to contact your doctor immediately. A more common cause, again, lies in the food you eat. Black and blue foods like blueberries, licorice, dark chocolate cookies, and grape juice can give this shade to your feces. Iron supplements and nicotine could also be the cause of that poop change in color. If black and blue foods as well as iron supplements are not part of your diet, then you should probably be alarmed. Number 5. Red Red stool is usually influenced by your diet. Beets, jello, colored drinks, tomatoes… Just think about what you've consumed recently. Two bowls of tomato soup? <laughs> well, you shouldn't be surprised. However, if food is not the cause, it's time to call your doctor. Blood in your poop is obviously an alarming sign. It may be an anal fistula or something more serious like hemorrhoids, ulcerative colitis, or even cancer. That's the word no one likes to hear. Before you get really scared, note that bowel cancer normally has other symptoms as well, such as losing weight, feeling extremely tired and breathless, and needing to strain and So remember, guys, always take a look before you flush. It's very important. I hope this was a helpful, helpful tip. Something we don't like to talk about, but it's very important to our health. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Lisa. Good night, everyone. A special welcome to our pastor, Pastor Longs, who is here with us. And we have some lovely visitors. I hope I'm not going to miss any names. Um, Chevelle Small and Opal, they are friends of the McPhersons. And I know we have a visitor who we'll hear from shortly. Kevin, welcome. Welcome, everyone. 
the duty is mine to introduce the person for the hour. No, not the hour, <laughs> for the moment. The person who God has appointed to break the bread of life tonight. She's a, <laughs> is a young lady. She's very passionate. She loves the Lord. She loves working with young people. She's a wife, a mother, a sister, an aunt, and also an aspiring lawyer. She's also the AY leader of the Old Road Seventh-day Adventist Church. I admire this young lady for her drive to succeed both spiritually and academically. I speak of no other than Sister Shasha Gay Bailey. Let us lift her in our prayers as she presents the word of God to us tonight. But before she speaks, we'll be blessed with a song from Brother Kevin Walcom. Good night, everyone. Good night. I hope you all are, you are hearing me clearly. Uh, my internet is not the best at this moment. Um, I hope all is well. Uh, hope you are having a good weekend thus far. Uh, so as I as I share this song with you, I hope that you'll be drawn even closer to God tonight. Um, and your a blessing will be on your lives for this upcoming week that is ahead of us. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances. The things I could not understand. Many times in trial, my weakness blurred my vision, and my frustration gets so hard again. Oh, within I'm reminded I've never been forsaken. I've never had to stand one test alone. When I look at all my victories, the spirit rises up in me, and it's through the fire my weakness is made strong. Oh, he never promised that the cross will not be heavy, nor the hills will not be hard to climb. Oh, he never offers a victory without fighting, but he said I would always come in time. And just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in, just hold on. Our Lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again. I know within myself that I will surely perish. Oh, but if I trust the mighty hands of God, he'll shield the flames again, again. He never promised that the cross will not be heavy, no, the hills will not be hard to climb. And he never offers a victory without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. And just remember when you're standing, in the valley of decision, and the adversary says, Give in, just hold on. Our Lord will show up, 
and he will take you through the fire again. Just hold on, or oh Lord will show up, and he will take you through the fire again. Good night, everyone. Um, could you guys let me know if you're hearing me by saying amen? Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you so much um, for that. I want to say thank you to Sister Palmer for her kind words of introduction and to Kevin for that lovely song. I feel like everything just keep, that is just coming together with the sermon that I have tonight. Um, I don't know why I keep finding myself in this situation. I keep saying that I am not a speaker, I am not a preacher, but yet somehow I always find myself in this position. I guess it is the work of God, and when he calls, you cannot say no, or you should not say no. So I'm trying to yield to his you know, prompting. Um, the topic of my sermon for tonight is transformed for the end times. And for the last two weeks, I struggled with what it is that I was supposed to speak tonight. And uh, I kept going back to this sermon that I wrote probably two years ago. And I don't remember if I had gotten the opportunity to speak. I think I was supposed to speak a Sunday night, but nobody came out. So I kept going back to this. Every time I prayed to God and I said, God, what is this that I'm supposed to speak about? I kept going back to this sermon. So tonight we'll be looking at transformed for the end times. Let us bow our heads as I pray. Merciful Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Dear Lord, as you see, I'm about to speak to your people. I pray that you will speak through me and that someone will be transformed tonight so that they can come to know you and life eternal. Continue to be with us. I pray that you'll be with the connectivity, dear Lord, so that everyone will be able to hear me loud and clearly. In your son's precious name, I pray. Amen. Butterflies develop through a process called metamorphosis. Metamorphosis comes from a Greek word that means transformation or change in shape. Insects such as grasshoppers, crickets, and cockroaches have what is called incomplete metamorphosis. So what happens is that their young usually looks very similar to the adults, but without the wings. So really, there is not much change that is taking place within the lives of the cockroaches. Butterflies, however, have what we call complete metamorphosis. So the young, who is called a larva, is very, very different from the adults. Also, at different stages of the transformation process, they'll feed on different types of food. So different food goes for different stages within their life cycle. So the first stage of this transformation is the egg. And the eggs are laid on plants by the adult female butterfly. And these plants will become the food for the hatching caterpillars. And then these eggs are very, very small. The second stage of this transformation is the feeding stage. And this stage, the larvae or the caterpillar um, feeds and feeds and feeds. So they eat and eat and eat. And then eventually what happens is that the caterpillar splits its skin and it sheds it. And it doesn't shed it once, but it sheds it four or five times. And at this stage, the food is eaten, is stored and used later on in the stage as an adult. The third stage is the transition stage. The caterpillar turns into a pupa and it is protected by a cocoon of silk. So on the outside to the human eye, it may seem as if nothing is happening, but on the inside, there are big changes taking place. So the legs of the butterfly are growing, the wings are forming, the eyes and the rest of the body are coming together. And 
all of these changes are in preparation for the greatest stage, which is the adult or the reproductive stage. At the final stage, it is the adult's job to mate and lay more eggs so that they can reproduce more and more butterflies. So now you guys may be wondering to yourself, why is she going on and on about butterflies and their life cycle? Fret not, I have a point and it is coming shortly. In Romans 12 verse 2, it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, brethren and friends, many of us in Zion are like the cockroaches. There is no complete transformation taking place within our lives. The only things that persons can look and see that has changed about us is that we were dipped in the water at baptism. The same way that we were before we took that dip is the same way that we are now. We are not growing, we are not changed, and we are not transformed. If we were transformed, our thoughts and our way of thinking should be brand new because our thoughts, as much as you may not want to admit it, ultimately influence our actions. A tainted mind, a sinful mind, a dirty heart cannot produce new and bountiful fruit. There are too many cockroaches in Zion when what we need are butterflies. If our relationship with Christ is not constantly being transformed for the better, how then can we prove what is the acceptable will of God? How then can we prove what it is that God wants from us? How then can we be foot soldiers for Christ in these last days? How then can we be truly prepared for the disaster and turmoil that we as Christians will face in these last days? 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5 states that this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. It's not, it never said might come, may come. It says shall come, it must come. For men shall be lovers of their own own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having, and this is a part, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such things we should turn away brethren and friends we live in a world where chasing wealth disrespect evil doing is the natural and normal order of the day just a few months ago or a few weeks ago two children and their grandmothers were murdered and just today a woman was gone down in church while worshiping people of this world do not fear god and those of us who claim to are playing church we have only a form of godliness but being godly is the furthest thing from our lives when will we realize that wrapping up time has passed when we real when will we realize that we should have already passed the stage of transformation where we should have shed backbiting where we should have shed lying where we should have shed stealing where we should have shed hypocrisy where we should have shed pride and covetousness we cannot be transformed without leaving behind the things that push us further and further from christ we cannot be transformed when we are acting like cockroaches by being a nuisance to our neighbors, when we are being a nuisance to our church members, when we are being a nuisance to our family members, instead of being their help in time of needs. Have you ever been around cockroaches? They are the most annoying things. They get in everything. They breed up and they breed up continuously. And this bad behavior, their bad um, habits, are perpetuated. 
they are continued and this is how our lives are when we um, absorb the bad behaviors and we are projecting it towards each other. We need to get rid of these bad habits so that we can be truly changed for Christ. In Ezekiel 36, verse 26, the Lord reminds us that a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. In Christ, brethren and friends, we are not supposed to try and defend self. We have to surrender and put away self so that we can be changed from the inside out. When our hearts are changed, when our thinking has changed, then the stresses and disasters that surround us in these end times will not face us because we will know without a doubt that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. This journey called life is full of twists and turns. It is full of ups and downs, injustices, persecution, and without God guiding us, we are bound to be lost. We are bound to be stagnant, we are bound to be unchanged, and we are bound to be unconverted. But, brethren and friends, but we don't have to go through these difficult situations on our own. We don't have to go through these challenging roller coasters on our own because we have a savior who will guide us each step of the way. Jesus calls upon us to follow him and place our feet in his footsteps so that we will never have a wrong turn, never make a wrong turn, so that we will never feel alone, so that we will always always be comforted so that we may be transformed with god on our side this is the only way that we will be able to stand the wiles of the devil and have the victory over sin if we are equipped then we will continue to lean on jesus we will continue to hold fast until he comes because his words are reassuring his words are true and his words are life-changing when your heart is is breaking with pain brethren and friends lean on jesus when the way seems dark and lonely lean on jesus when all hope seems gone lean on jesus no matter what we are faced with like the butterfly we can be transformed and rise above all the odds with christ in the midst he is the only one who can wipe away all tears from our eyes he alone has the power to rid us of the sting of death he alone has the power to and authority to rid us of suffering he alone has the power to calm the storms that surround us and give us rest from our burdens and give us life more abundantly. John 10 verse 10 says that the thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and to destroy. But the Lord, brethren and friends, but my Lord, our Lord, hath come that they might have life, that we might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. What a merciful God. Amen. What an all-loving God. What an all-knowing God. What an all-compassionate God. Amen. Yet still, we are not transformed. We know these things and we are not transformed. If it is that we do not know how to be transformed or it is that we are too weak to be transformed, what we need to do is stretch our hands out to God and cry out for mercy and strength to keep going. Ask him to open our eyes that we can clearly see that there are better days ahead of us. With him, we simply need to be faithful. In Jeremiah 31, verse 30, 13, God says that I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. So through every difficult circumstance, every trial, every loss, every heartache, he offers us a glorious and a beautiful end. In sickness, he offers compassion. In darkness, he offers light. In brokenness, he offers healing. In turmoil, he offers peace. In doubt, he offers hope. And in hatred, he offers love. 
So we do not need to worry or fear. For he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am not saying that the transformation process is going to be easy. I would be lying if I did. Each stage is tedious. Each stage requires a lot of work and commitment and giving up of self. But the hard work turns into something so beautiful and so rewarding in the end. Discouragement and doubt are tools that the devil uses to try and destroy our confidence in our all-powerful God. But my Jesus walked among sinners and was surrounded by evil pleasures, yet he sinned not. He was tempted the same as we are, but he did not fall into Satan's trap, not even once. Jesus was completely transformed from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. He led by example and showed us the importance of a close connection to our heavenly father. Jesus himself leaned on God to give him the strength he needed to resist temptation. He talked with God every single day. He was constantly in an attitude of prayer. Jesus wasn't living a cockroach lifestyle. He was fully transformed and clothed in righteousness. Amen. You see, brethren and friends, the devil works hard to make sin look attractive and appealing. And this is why many of us struggle with being transformed. But whatever worldly pleasures we partake in, they will not satisfy our souls or give us true and lasting joy. Instead, they will give us unfulfilled and a deep desire and longing for something more. Instead, they will give us a mountain of guilt and regret. Tonight, Jesus wants us to know that we too can have the victory over sin. All that we need to do is lean on him and allow the transformation process to begin. We need to spend more time in prayer, more time reading, thus saith the Lord. We need to develop a closer and deeper relationship with him if we want to be truly changed. Jesus is willing, brethren and friends, and able to give us the strength, the power, and the desire we need to be converted as Christians. Lean on Jesus to overcome sin. Lean on Jesus to be completely transformed for the end times and for his coming. I wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. I've tired of sin and straying lord now i'm coming home coming home coming home nevermore to run Thine arms of love, cause now I'm coming home, my only hope, my only plea, now I'm coming that jesus died and died for me lord i'm coming home coming home coming home 
nevermore to roll and wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. Brethren and friends, visitors, if it is that you are tired of living the cockroach lifestyle, if you are yearning for your life to be transformed, if you are yearning for you to be made anew, if you are yearning for God to transform your lives and create you in his image, if it is that you want to put away sin, if it is that you want a heart of flesh, a heart that is pure, a heart that is connected to Jesus, I am asking you to raise your hands tonight as an indication to everyone that you want to be transformed for the better so that we can pray for you tonight that a change can come into your lives, a change can be washed in your life, a change can come and that you can be made whole tonight. Please raise your hand, use the raise hand feature tonight so that we can pray for you tonight. I'm gonna put the the pressure on pastor tonight. Pastor, I know it is short notice, but the spirit leads me to ask you to pray for us if you are so inclined. Pastor? It seems like this pastor is not there. Um, I'm going to ask Brother Williams to just pray for us right now. If you're not having issues, Ella, Let us pray. Loving Lord, we are thankful for the message and the messenger. Indeed, your words have gone forth with clarity and in the power of the spirit. I cry out like the psalmist for every one of us who are on this platform. Search us, O Lord. See if there be any wicked ways in us and cleanse us from all our sins. Tonight, dear God, once more, we give you thanks for the message that has come to us in a time like this. We need to know whether we are being transformed or we are conforming. But Lord, we pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit that we will surrender all on the altar of sacrifice. And that your words that are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path will illuminate our thoughts and our mind so that we will be transformed in the similitude of Jesus Christ. We thank you once more for the very timely message. It is one that personally calls me to reflect on my life and my misgiving. And I know even now you're knocking at arts doors through the length and breadth of this world that have tuned into this platform tonight. And that I pray that they will have an experience with you that will lead all of them that are tuning, including myself, to a personal relationship with you and lead us into life everlasting. Continue to bless 
this medium, Lord, as we use it to reach our constituency, the area that the church is within. But also we are thankful for those who we are reaching outside of the church, outside of the area of the church. We ask you in a very special way to help us to apply wisdom to our hearts so that we will not sin against you. These are not unmentioned mercies, dear God. I humble ask in the precious name of Jesus that the church say amen. 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 I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. I pray that mm -hmm. the the, the, the message tonight will bring a transformation in all our lives. Thank you again and come back again. We'll see you on Wednesday and we invite you all to the same place, same time and we hope for another message from God. Amen. Enjoy the rest of the night, brothers and sisters.